Hey guys, it's Ian Myers here from Ian Myers Wellness.com. Here with two gentlemen here. What's uh, up? I'm Ben. I'm Jacob. Ben and Jacob. And uh, we all just actually met today for the first time. And these guys uh, have a really incredible story. So we wanted to drop in with you guys and make a short video and share a little bit about you know, what you guys are up to and how you got started on this journey. Because um, one thing's for sure is that there's a lot of people out there who you know, have, are suffering from, you know, illnesses and diseases and a lot of different issues. So, you know, I want to let these guys share a little bit about their story, what they're up to, and um, we'll just jump right in here. So what inspired you guys to, uh, to get onto the path of just like health and wellness and healing? What, what was your inspiration? Were you guys sick? Did you have anything going on? I think, I think for me, I was able to uh, thankfully, I wasn't sick. I saw the what they call it, the SAD, the Standard American Diet, at one point about two and a half years ago. Yeah. And I looked at what I wanted in my life, and I looked at uh, who had it, and I looked at who didn't, and I looked at the choices they made and the simple things you know you can do daily. And so I just started learning uh, simple principles of health and long term, you know, eating less meat, eating less dairy, eating. Uh, more real foods, more just whole nutrition. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, it was a decision for me that wasn't for the immediate, it was more for the long term. Uh, but through that, I've also had great experience in the past few years. I don't get sick, I have great energy all the time. I'm just pretty, pretty good with my body. He doesn't get sick, which is a big, probably, byproduct of like eating healthy, uh, having more awareness around your foods. And, you know, that's like a. That's like where the rubber meets the road is when you get the awareness around eating more, you know, high water content, fruits and vegetables in their natural state. There's like some really amazing stuff that happens. Yeah, you, you figure out why you're eating in the first place, yeah. you know, yeah. instead of it just being a mindless, like, or, or empty calories, now you're getting nourishment to your cells and your body. How about you, man? So yeah, for me, it was basically like, so I used to have a lot of acne. I had acne on my face. It wasn't as bad on my face as my back. My back was covered and I was just, I was sick of having it. And I always felt like something was missing in terms of like my energy levels. I was always tired and things like that. I didn't look too healthy. But, um, so yeah, how it started for me is I started doing a bunch of research. You know, there's all those those pills and potions and lotions and stuff that tell you, oh, use this, you can get rid of it. But I came across something on a page that talked about diet and I it piqued my interest and I, I started to dive into it a lot more and then basically I learned that everything comes from internal and you can't, there's nothing you can put on top that will fix it. So I went pescatarian first for six weeks and I saw a little bit but nothing really happened. Uh, I felt a little bit better, skin cleaned up like a little bit but not really. And then I went vegan and within two weeks all the acne in my face was pretty much gone. Wow. My back had cleared up almost completely, not not completely, but um, saw some improvements. I, yeah, I saw a lot of improvement on my back for sure. And then, um, so I did that for about eight months, seven or eight months, and then I went to raw, and then and then that's when I really noticed uh, the acne to go away completely. Like, I still had like at least 10, 15 on my back still, just chilling there. But I went, <laughs> I went raw, and it was, it cleared up within, within a, like a month, like you gotta give it time because you know you've been doing so much damage to your body over you know the first 20 years of my life I would eat garbage three times a day. But um, yeah, cleared up real quick and uh, never looked back. So how long have you how long have you been raw? So I have been raw for I think uh, two months, three months now. Okay. It's never eaten Yeah, for about two months. And before that, you were plant based for how long? Uh, for around. Uh, for around eight months. Okay. Yeah. And how about you, man? Yeah. So I got into uh, learning about being plant based two and a half years ago, but I made the the full jump on May 2016. So coming right up on two years of like, being vegan, but we actually kind of jumped into raw vegan together back in February. We did a 14 day like uh, water and watermelon and like water lemon juice fast. fast. How long did you go <laughs> for? 14 days. Wow. 14 yeah. days on intense. watermelon. <laughs> So that's, no no food, which but I mean, was uh, an experience. I, I believe that's the best way. If you if you are looking to transition, I believe doing a, a fast like that really empowers you in terms of food because 
once you go back, it's like anything tastes good. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. I can eat bananas all day. Well, it's <laughs> almost know? like when you do a fast of any kind, whether it be water or fruit fast or mono, like a grape fast or something, you know, what happens is like you give your body a chance to just focus in on one food or one thing, so you get that opportunity to just really dive into one thing, and, and, and that's where some deeper levels of healing come on, because there's not, the food is so, can be so, uh, energy, drawing. energy drawing, in fact, 60% of our energy goes to like, for food digestion and breaking down food, but when you eat something simple, like a mono meal of like, watermelon or grapes, it's amazing like what happens the difference in energy in our body Power of our body to be able to heal itself absolutely because it's simplicity yeah. you're just going back to mono one 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 fruit one meat one thing and the body has a different way of uh, metabolizing or digesting that food and utilizing all the nutrition uh, it loves simplicity but the thing is, is we're so used to eating like burritos with like 40 different things on there and it's Body's good out. or pizza <laughs> with like you know proteins and starches and all these other things all these good ingredients that just when we get into the digestion process it's like everything just kind of neutralizes and goes crazy so uh, so 14 days on watermelons what was your uh, what was your experience on that? What did you get? Did you notice like deeper levels of healing or did you notice any kind of like discomfort or what, what was your, what was uh, your experiences? Well, definitely uh, getting used to the fact that it's not eating. That was an idea that was extremely important. How did you do that? Like how did, uh, how was that? Um, what, what inspired me was just doing so much research and finding out the incredible he uh, benefits that you can get from it in terms of deep healing like you mentioned yeah. and stuff like that. Uh, what really inspired me the most about this diet and, and fasting or whatever is really doing your research and, and diving into the truth and finding out what is possible for you when you actually do it and that's what pushed me over the edge I was like okay I like I always felt like there's something missing and when I did this I felt like I actually found found the answer that I was looking for and so the fast was just a gateway to entering a new life and def, uh, but yeah, it was just hard. It was hard not eating the cooked foods for sure for, for for a week for the first week. But it got easier. Yeah. And easier. you guys did this together, so you had like we had a little bit of accountability. Yeah. There was yeah, definitely yeah. there was times you know we were both working at the same place too, and everyone was kind of like, who are these two weird dudes? He even was bringing <laughs> like, his like, juicer to work crazy. at some point, <laughs> <laughs> like carrying it in. So it's possible, and no matter where you are, what you're doing, you can bring your juicer to work. I mean, why not? Represent, make a statement, take a stand for your health, and like show people, get people like their their curiosity up, where they're like, "What is this guy doing?" And then like six months later, they go, "Wow, he looks really healthy. He looks really good. Maybe lost a few pounds, or or you know something came online for you. Skin looks better. There's so many opportunities to up level the health, which is yeah. uh, really cool. So so like. Uh, when you came off of it, you know, because like beginning a, a fast of any sort, whether it be a day, 24 hours, or seven days, or 14 days, how you come off of it's always really important too. Yeah. How did you guys, uh, through your research and through what your experience is, what, how did you guys end it and break it? What so, did you do? So what I found is that if you are to do extended fast, especially 14 days plus, even seven days, is you know you don't want to immediately just jump right back into cooked foods or potatoes. Or, I can't have a cheeseburger. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, your your body will be will be shocked. It'll be so cleaned and focused on not really digesting to like, holy crap, all this stuff out of nowhere. And uh, I actually heard a story of this one guy who did a really extended. It was from Dr. Morris actually, one of his videos. Um, they did a really extended fast, and then the first thing he ate was like baked potatoes, and he ended up dying or something crazy like that. I heard that one so, too. It, it was <laughs> not good. It, so, he got, yeah. So, Thanks. so it's really important that you ease back into your normal eating habits, whether if you want to go back to the standard American or if you want to go back to plant-based and just cook foods. But it's really important to to ease back into it with just the fruits, just the fruits, and then maybe incorporating a salad the, the next couple days, and then slowly uh, moving back into whatever you want to eat. Um, that feels tip. best for you. Yeah. But, um, yeah, we were looking, I think, to, uh, the fast was a reset for us, and I think it was to kind of take our power back over food a little bit. Like, yeah. we, having the discipline and the authority to you choose what you want to feed yourself and not be, like, enslaved to just your habits or your environment or just the stuff everyone's telling you you should eat or what's around you. Yeah. So I think it was, like, being able to put it, all the food on pause for a minute 
and like even though we really want to eat it <laughs> and just get a little bit of really? discipline and control like over what we choose what we want and so going back I, yeah do you, would you say stuff. would you say like but, you get to you get an you get an experience to see just how much the mind comes on about like like food um, food addictions or food absolutely, cravings absolutely. That, like the mindset it's you crazy. guys and I teach this with my clients is, is how much how important having a really healthy and sound mindset is before you get started on it on a journey like you said you mentioned you know one of your tips was like to do your research and and it's so important because when you do the research and you develop the, the mindset and you kind of know understand it. you understand it and you have the mindset then you can go and embark on your journey with like some stability or at least a little bit more uh, like you're a little more grounded you know you're going in so whenever you're having doubt yeah. or worries yeah. you are reminded why you stick with it like exactly so it's like why you're doing it. And having the knowledge and the understanding can really help you so if you guys out there are considering going plant-based or raw or just are looking for a way to get yourself healthy or just start you know just take that first step do your research um, check out some of my videos these guys are going to be posting up some videos on their experiences here real soon so we'll leave a link for that uh, for their information uh, there's dr. Robert Morris out there who is uh, my mentor and these guys are familiar with Robert Morris and uh, his teachings. We'll leave. Uh, Check out Dr. Morris. Yeah, he's a pretty, pretty amazing dude. I've and watched so many of his videos. Thousands of videos. <laughs> so this guy videos. has, uh, he's in Sarasota, Florida, and he talks about detoxification specifically. So if you're looking to heal your body and you want to you wanna find a way to do it that um, kind of cuts out all of the supplementation and starts to just talk about healing on a nat in, in a more natural way that uses fruits and vegetables, and, um, and botanical herbs, that's really what he talks about. He's not interested in your lifestyle and what you do after. He's more focused, laser focused in on detoxification and healing your body, so that's a great one. Um, but um, I'm not even sure where I was going with this, with what I was saying. Uh, but Dr. Robert Morris is a really great, uh, is a great place to start. And uh, just find some inspiration out there that, uh, do your research, find some inspiration, and uh, we'll, we'll uh, We'll definitely, we got a few more things to share here because you guys are doing, um, you're gonna start doing some videos here soon, right? Is that what? Yeah, yeah um, we're gonna start making some content. We're kinda I, setting I the a, intention now, so. Yeah. <laughs> I have a couple good friends in San Diego that really are into just filming on what it's like to be vegan, what it's like to just like have a more high level of awareness on just your day-to-day -day operations and uh, I'm looking to get out there more and definitely share and share just the practical things that help me either as an athlete or just as a, someone looking to, on a budget, like just keep, on a budget. keep, keep yourself in great health and what are the simple things you could do and how does it look long term and it's inspiring to, to meet Ian and get to see, uh, I think I feel like I'm on the right path now, I'm like okay I'm going to be looking great yeah. in 10, 20, 30 years Absolutely. And, and feeling amazing. And, yeah, you guys are starting at the perfect time because you have you have your whole life ahead of you, and uh, you know you have. We live in a beautiful place here in California to be able to access uh, good food, and you know there's so much information out there online that's available to support you guys on your journey. Um, so why don't we do this? We'll we'll share maybe a few tips that you guys can just you know share with them. I mean, of course, doing research is going to be like a good place for everybody to start. That may be watching this that want to. Um, you know, get healthy. So, what what are maybe two or three more tips that we can that we can share with, with uh, the viewers on uh, um, if they want to take their health to the next level? What can they? What are some things? Some things that you guys would recommend that have helped you? Yeah. So, um, what I found, um, if you are interested in, in doing a, a raw diet um, and you're really you're really curious and actually diving into it and doing it, uh, one of my 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 first advice would be to make sure you get the right amount of calories and track your calories because you know there's a lot of raw raw fooders out there that they're not they're just simply not eating enough and you know you could eat you know you could eat five bananas or whatever but that's only 500 calories you could eat this massive salad fit for four people but that could only be around 400 calories and you know a lot of people they just don't eat enough they eat a banana or two an apple or an orange and they're like i don't have any energy but you really you have you have to like stuff your face and yeah. you can and that's the glory of it you can eat as much as you want. That's a good tip, or that's and that's a really good seg or lead in. I, I have something I'd like to share and add to that. So let's give them some uh, 
maybe three or four foods that are, that are really good in, as far as bringing calories that they could, you know, since salads are not very dense as far as calories go, uh, we know bananas are about 100 calories per yeah. banana. But what I are some? Bananas. I do too. Uh, <laughs> I mean, I'll, I'll buy boxes at a time. <laughs> I got a box at home right now. <laughs> so, like, if if somebody's like, and, and you're right on that, is getting in enough calories so you're not you're not hungry. Uh, something like avocados could be really good. You know, the fats carry a lot of um, calories. So if you want to build, you got to get the cal you got to get the calories up. And um, avocados are good. Nuts and seeds, if they're soaked and sprouted, you know, that could be a really good way. Um, I mean, one cup of soaked sunflower seeds is like 800 calories just one cup and you can put one cup in it and make a dressing with that and you got 800 calories yeah. so what i what i found is um when it comes to fat so you got to be careful because a lot of a lot of raw fooders will you know they'll, they'll use all this these oils and, and, and avocados are great don't get me wrong i have about like one or two avocados a day but they'll focus so much on such fatty foods and dehydrated foods and gourmet foods that are around 60% and they'll actually have more fat in their diet than most standard American diets will yeah, and, and that's fat. still that's still not that's not good that's in, in long term that's that's affect that's going to affect your health negatively so you got to make sure that you're having mainly carbohydrates and low proteins low fats particularly uh, I don't know if you, you guys have heard of the 80 10 10 but 80% carbs 10% proteins 10% fats is what I've found to, to be the most uh, effective in terms of your health and, longevity. Um, yeah, longevity. Yeah, yeah there's so many whatever. diets now like ketogenic and you know these diets that are promoting high fat and, and high, high protein. protein and it's like no. so many acids. There's a lot <laughs> of acid your forming kidneys. foods and that's a whole nother video but I mean yeah you're ex you're exactly right. Our body's made up of like um, I think 16% carbon carbohydrates and like 3% nitrogen and so the foods that are nitrogen are protein forming yeah. and so if we're 16% carbon, it would make sense to eat more carbohydrate rich foods rather than the other way, you know, 3%. Uh, you know, a lot of people with the ketogenic diet are doing it the other way. They're eating 16% yeah. fat or, yeah. or, or protein with uh, little to no carbohydrates. So, um, and this, I, this, is a, this is something I heard that really uh, put it in perspective for me, but you know, being, being as, uh, you know, say a baby, for example, or a baby animal, or whatever they we all we all breastfeed or whatever we grow off of our mother's milk and if you look at all the milks out of all the animals humans their the milk is only six percent protein it actually has the lowest amount of protein and that's when we're supposed to be doing the most growth in our entire life and once we we're already grown to our full size we should be having less than six percent because you know if we're having six percent naturally from our moms um, and the most important Time of growth and the most exponential part of growth, you know, and we're all we're all having dairies and stuff like that, and that's that's made for a baby cow to grow to a huge size in a short period of time, and that's just messing up your hormones and the, the chemistry in your body. Yeah, for but sure. Like yeah, it's like we're the only species that drinks another animal's milk. Yeah. You know, <laughs> you don't see a gorilla drinking horse milk. Or, <laughs> you don't you see know. a cow. You want to go and start sucking on its titty? You just <laughs> you know? don't do it. Uh, but for some reason, we find it. We you know, we, we've uh, we've uh, we've been doing this for quite some time, and it's time I think that we have enough inf information and evidence and studies done that shows that we don't actually need cow's milk. And um, you know, there's other amazing sources that are natural that we can get from coconut milks and things like that, almond milks and stuff that are um, actually very nourishing to the body, provide some really good stuff for us. Um, so, what are some other tips that we could um, that maybe you have something you want to share? Or yeah. Yeah, I was going to say, I, I'm not sure if anyone's familiar with uh, Anthony Robbins, Tony Robbins, but I was just listening to a video on him last night, and he, you know, this is more of like, all right, like, I am interested, I do want to feel better, I want to implement this, but what does it look like long term? And he talks about everyone kind of has rules of their life and rules of like, you know, what's healthy to you, what's healthy to you, and what's healthy to you, or what's not healthy, and what rules you're living by. And it's, uh, for me, it's like having a few, you know, we all have our shoulds and we all have our musts, he says, and your shoulds are the things that sound good to you and you'd like to implement them and, you know, maybe once a week or a couple times a month you're going to go lift weights or you'll eat your salad or whatever. Um, for me, it's finding a few key things that you know are great for you, whether it just be getting six to eight hours of sleep, whether it be, I, I do my best to drink 
gallon of water a day. And not just any water, like yeah, we, really good water. Yeah, we drink, uh, you know, Congan water, you've probably heard of it. But it's a uh, fine quality, quality sources. <laughs> Um, but, but, yeah, it's great stuff. It really is. That's how I learned about this. But uh, whatever it is for you that you know you should be doing, taking it from a should to a must on a consistent level, I think long term is an easy way to make sure you're actually uh, going to see some change in your life. You know, they say uh, your life will never change until you change something you do on a daily basis. Yeah, so, those daily consistent practices. Uh, yeah, I think just like whether, whether like, I think Ian picked one thing he added a, at the beginning, right? He, yeah. He added like a juice? Yeah, it was just a juice. It was just a simple 32 ounce, the daily juicing habit. You know, it was but was cool. it like kind of a must? Uh, yeah, it became a must for me. Uh, every single day, I did that for three and a half months and that changed everything. I mean, it changed, my taste buds changed to where uh, coming from um, like 30 years of not eating vegetables at all, to basically craving them and, and wanting them exclusively. So, you know, ha and that just, all that came online because of a daily juicing habit. It changed my palate, changed my taste buds. It got vitamins and minerals and enzymes into the body that I wasn't having before because of all of the, the, the cooked food and processed food, and sugars and refined sugars, stuff like that. So, and you, yeah. Yeah, you just brought something that I resonated with is that what I noticed is that you know, even during the fast, it was, it was hard because that was like the first three weeks of, of being raw. And even afterwards, the first month, month and a half, you know, especially living in a home where there's a lot of cooked foods and stuff, it's just like, ah, like I want it. But over time, it's like your body starts to forget about that. It's like you, you don't even crave it anymore. And the more you eat all this nutrients that your body is craving so much and you feed it, you start to get hooked. You start to get addicted. And now, now, now I look forward like, I am so excited when I get to make my huge salad at night. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like I get so happy for my salad and just like eating just a bunch of fruit. Like it's awesome. I yeah. love it. Yeah, you, <laughs> it's like it, it does something for the uh, like when when we visit when our when we can see something that has a lot of colors. It just does something to the body. Like the cells in the body, so they uh, uh, it's almost like they understand what that what we're seeing as something that is nut uh, nutritious and really good for us and. When I build a salad, it's like all the colors, you know, come to life. It's like a canvas, a green canvas, and then it all, all the, the all the colors, you know, like how how bright and vibrant can you make the salad? And then it feels good to eat something like that. You know, you give it a little blessing, and and then and then consume the food, and it's amazing what happens, you know. And then doing your consistent practices, just pick one thing daily that you can implement. And then if I if I had another another tip, if you're starting a rocker diet, is uh, don't be afraid of fruit. I know, I know there's a huge um, uh, idea out there, you know, it's like, oh, stay away from fruit, that's, that's too much sugar and all that, but that's speaking in terms of man-made sugar. We gotta look at, at, at sugar that was created from the source, from God, from the universe, or whatever, and nature intended us for us to eat that. We're naturally drawn to, to that. It's, it's, the, it's the only thing that we truly, truly crave in its raw, whole, natural state, you know? You're out in the middle of a, in the wilderness as a, a wild human, you know, you know, <laughs> you see a cow, you see some grains, you see a bush of kale, or you see a tree of mangoes. I'm like, can I go where the mangoes are at, please? Yeah. <laughs> you yeah. Know? Um, that would be the, and the first. The, the sugar is there's, there's such a simple sugar. You know, it, it enters into our bloodstream and, and distributes to our trillion, 18 trillion cells almost immediately, and it gives you it gives you energy. And actually, grains and other foods like that actually have a higher glycemic load than sugar does itself. And and you feel it when you eat the sugar. You feel on top of the world when you eat when you eat a lot of fruit. That's, Absolutely, that's, I love fruit. And especially if you eat it first thing in the morning or, or as a first meal when you're still on an empty stomach. You know that's like the most the best time to have fruit is just on awesome an empty right stomach. Now. Easiest easiest way to get your calories too. Totally. Yeah. Yeah. I mean mangoes and bananas and papayas. There's so many <laughs> incredible fruits out there. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Just wanted to drop in and let these guys share a little bit about their experience. Um, plant-based and raw and uh, and just on their journey so uh, check them out we'll leave some information below and uh, that way you guys can follow them on their journey when they start to make their videos I uh, hope you guys have an amazing day out there and we'll talk to you on the next video thanks everybody hope See you uh, good luck